All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know who this is? This is your boy, Brando, and I'm back with another video. Now, today I'm going to do something a little bit different, and I hope all of you are well. All of the subscribers, the listeners, the viewers, people who like, comment, and subscribe, I'm sending you lots of love and light. Now, I want to send some love and light to Crypto Eddie. She mentioned that, you know, Stellar, actually, I'm just going to let her say it for herself. But today, I'm diving deep into Stellar, and I'm going to continue to show you why Stellar is being used and why everybody else is building upon Stellar. And more are building upon Stellar than they are XRP. And that is a fact. And I'm going to continue to show you. And I want to show you, Crypto Eddie, the same. And uh, I hope, all, hope you're doing well in Japan. And uh, here it is, guys. Here it is. I like to bring you the truth. And sometimes, you know, people need to be shown the truth. It's maybe they just be, they may be, uh, you know, lacking a little bit of knowledge. But I, I can help her and anybody else who seems to think that uh, XLM Stellar is uh, shit, so to speak, or undervalued or uh, subpar to uh, their standard of their little precious XRP. Uh, so here it is. So an innocent crypto investor new to the space decided to Hit up Crypto Eddie. Hey, hey, I hope you are well and safe. I wanted to know, what do you think about Stella? Her response, they are trying. Seems to me she's using her influence to, you know, put XLM under the bus. They ain't doing nothing. Somebody else sent me this on Twitter. Kaboom. One, two, three, four, four. Everything possible to support XRP and the XRP ecosystem. And I only see a push from Stellar to push the rails. And so you can, again, disagree with me and point me to a direction where it shows me that they are uh, in some way supporting lumens like XRP is supported by Ripple, but I don't see it. I haven't found it and I don't see it. And you just heard from the senior strategist from the Stellar Foundation. And it's very clear that Lumens is not a part of their focus at all. And speak. Well, Crypto Eddie, I think you are very wrong, my friend. And I'm going to point you to the way in this video. And I hope any body who watches Crypto Eddie, you also point this video out to her so that she is aware going forward. Now, somebody else sent me this on Twitter, NYC coin, NY. And this is all going to prove my point, why Stellar is the beast that it is, why I think it is better than uh, XRP. And that's just my opinion. And like I said before, I'm entitled to my opinion. So all you XRP maxis who want to get ready to jump me, through the virtual screen, uh, think it's again, okay? Think again and do a little more research for yourself and stop depending on everybody else to do your research. You need to see the truth. I have seen the light and I'm going to illuminate all of you people who think XLM is not up to par, is not up to the standard that you hold XRP. You say XRP is the standard. I say XLM is the standard, okay? Here we are. Here's the video. The real vision here is that you have a network, much like the internet, that anyone can participate in, my personal view is the ultimate public ownership of the payment rails 
is yes. interconnected institutions and computers that are maintaining ledgers and allowing direct person-to-person -person transactions. So as you said at the beginning, the internet's the classic example of that. And so we're trying to build that seller as a, a, an internet level protocol. And in the longer term, what, what, you know, what I see happening here is, um, first of all, that having a internet native payment instrument is kind of inevitable. And when I say internet native, you know, the problem with the internet today is there are a lot of cool apps on your phone that you can use to transact value, but because they're not internet native, they're not interoperable with each other. So exactly. for example, Jeremy, if you have Zelle on your phone and I have Venmo, yeah. and that's all that we have, we, we can't send money to each other. It's a weird closed loop. As I started to learn more about uh, how payments work in the world, it just became really clear to me that, that uh, there needed to be this universal payment network, right? There needed to be a, uh, essentially a way that no matter what financial institution you use, whether you're at a bank or like some mobile money thing or like Venmo or whatever, uh, or, or you know, you're using one currency and, and someone else is using another, all of these things should be interoperable, right? It should work like the internet does. In a fully open system, you know, kind of like in the way that my Gmail and your Hotmail can communicate sure. with each other. SMTP or HTTP. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so the analogy we always use is, is basically uh, the SMTP is the underlying protocol for email, right? And it, it basically means where you don't have to care if you know somebody's at a university or a company or whatever, as long as they're running a mail server, you can send a message to them, right? Uh, and the same should be true of payments, I think. Um, and so that's what Stellar is designed to be, is this universal payment network, essentially. Uh, There's a reason why most internet startups choose to use Stripe as their payments platform, as opposed to using a bank as their direct payments vendor, and that is because Stripe is an internet native payment processor. They, they, they know what they're about. They're, they're direct, they, they exist in cyberspace. Yeah. They're not a, a software that is engrafted onto those protocols. And if that's the case with payment processing, it seems to be inevitable that internet native money yeah. would be the fastest and most uh, ease of use way of transmitting value across those networks. Uh, lumens are always they're always needed as a kind of a DOS prevention mechanism to prevent you know the, the network being spammed. Uh, and I still think if one central bank issues a token uh, or issues their like digital currency up there, you still the lumens could be useful as a bridge currency when you want to go from that fiat to a different kind of fiat, right? Maybe lumens are a natural choice for bridging the the, the two uh, currencies. He is IBM Worldwide. I forget his name, but we'll come up to him a little bit later in the video. Kind of settling a transaction with a counterparty in seconds with right. no with, with with very high levels of security and, and with you know with sort of third generation blockchains, we're now seeing transaction costs that can really get you know approaching zero effectively in the same way like we don't think about how much it costs to send an email. We don't think about a cross-border email, you know, we just sort of we had right. this like free communications right. platform that everyone just kind of connects to. And that's essentially what we're what we're trying to do is make it where payments works, uh, how information works on the internet now, where you, you, everything's interoperable. You can send money to anywhere. Things. What I think will happen is three to five years from now, I think banks will be connecting to blockchains the same way that they connect to uh, SWIFT and ACH and other networks. Right. Once they do that, the nature of banking will begin to change because while banking will always, I, I believe, be the key on ramp and the key value add service provider. Yeah. People, people's financial services lives, they will not be the bottleneck of the transaction of financial services. Instead, there will be nodes on a network along with a lot of other nodes, many of which won't be banks. And yeah. that will really change, I think, and allow banks to focus on what they're best at and what we really need them to do. So I think that will happen for sure. Yeah. What we wanted to build was uh, an internet level protocol for payments where it didn't matter what finan kind of financial institution you're using, whether it's a bank, uh, you know, some startup, some microfinance institution, uh, you know, some mobile money thing. If I was sending one currency, you were receiving another. All of these things should, have, should be interoperable. And so that's what Stellar is. It's, a, it's an open protocol for payments. Did you hear that? Anything to anything. Open protocol for payments. The universal system. I do think that in a world of geopolitical instability, crypto assets in general will grow and become a more significant part of people's lives. That's one of the reasons why you know, I believe Bitcoin prices are going up in an environment of perceived instability. Is people yeah. start to believe that sovereigns are you know, maybe not yeah. as trustworthy as they once were. Bitcoin is not generated by any sovereign. Maybe that's the thing to hang on to. So I think you'll see more of that. Uh, and basically the idea is that 
we are trying to build this internet level protocol for payments, right? We want it to be, you know, kind of this open standard that everyone can use. It should be neutral and accessible and, and, uh, you know, people don't want to feel like they're benefiting their competitor or there's some central company. I mean, if you imagine the internet formed by a for-profit company, it would just be a very different world, right? Sure. So I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's important that, uh, Mm. I want to show you one quick thing right here. Judd McKayla, Mount Gox creator, Stellar co-founder and CTO, and Ripple co-founder. Ladies and gentlemen, don't listen to the narrative. You have to be able to question everything. People may get up on the screen and look nice and appear nice and, you know, and can sound like they have the best accents and, you know, they're, they're really nice people. But remember, there's wolves in sheep's clothing. And they look at you as sheep. And they will prepare you, utilizing all those skills to manipulate you and prepare you like the perfect little lamb chop you are. And they will season you up and put all salt and pepper on it. And then DAI will come in and put a little bit of cinnamon on you. And then I might just take a picture of it. Well, I'll draw you a picture of it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my channel. Well, my channel along with my partner Sparks Flames, but the way that we deliver this news and this truth and the facts will be the way that it is. And if you don't like it, you can just go continue to be the sheep, but we're gonna question the other side of the coin. Now let's dig deeper. IBM launches a blockchain-based global payments network using Stellar's cryptocurrency. This was in 2019. Crypto Eddie, they're not using Stellar cryptocurrency. Here it is. IBM launches a blockchain-based global payments network using Stellar's cryptocurrency. Let me highlight this here. Stellar's cryptocurrency. Let's go in. IBM is paving the way for banks and other regulated financial institutions to join the blockchain revolution. Rather than going through a series of intermediaries when sending money across borders, IBM has created a real-time global payments network to support cross-border transactions and foreign exchange in more than 50 countries using digital assets, also known as cryptocurrencies or stable coins. IBM Blockchain Worldwide will help financial institutions improve the services they deliver to their consumers by optimizing and accelerating foreign exchange cross-border payments and remittances. Using the Stellar Protocol, Worldwire serves as a network provider for international payments, enabling point-to-point money transfers in lieu of complexities of conventional correspondent banking. Now, I want you to understand when they say the protocol, that means they are using that particular internet of value. They are using the cryptocurrency. They're using that tech. So if you're new to the game and you don't understand that, then you don't understand. And what you don't know is your enemy because that can be used against you in the court of a law. And in this law is the crypto law. While IBM announced an initial pilot of Worldwire in October 2017, today the network is officially accessible in a growing number of markets. Guys, they're not going to tell you what they got going on all the time. You have to read. They say the best place to hide the truth is in a book or right in front of your damn face. And how many of you read this article? Crypto Eddie ain't gonna read it to you because she's painting the narrative for her, her own agenda or whoever's agenda is behind it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just have to give you the other side of the coin. And if you have a problem with that, you might just not need to listen to the channel. This is for those who want the truth and who want another perspective. If you are tired of hearing the same old song and dance and you want to go dance to a new radio station, bigger than race is that station. Good morning. (laughs) 
We've created a new type of payment network designed to accelerate remittances and transform cross-border payments to facilitate the movement of money in countries that need it most, said Marie Wake, General Manager, IBM Blockchain. By creating a network where financial institutions support multiple digital assets, we expect to spur innovation and improve financial inclusion worldwide. According to IBM Worldwire, is the first blockchain network of its kind to integrate payment messaging, clearing, and settlement on a single unified platform. Participants are also allowed to dynamically choose from a variety of digital assets for settlement. That's where that anything to anything comes in. Currently, Worldwire has enabled payment locations in 72 countries with 48 currencies and 44 banking endpoints. Crypto Eddie, what, 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 what are we talking about here? This alone combats what you just said in that video. But I'm going to go deeper. We've created a new type of payment network that is unique in the sense that it streamlines the ability of businesses and consumers to move money around the world in real time. This enables improved transparency without sacrificing the regulatory controls and policies we need in order to make sure that there aren't bad actors in the system. And that's what we're doing here. We, 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 we are calling out the bad actors in the system. Or not necessarily bad all the way, but bad for a moment. We are convening a brand, a brand new network in 72 countries convening a brand new network in 72 countries that will support pay in and pay out endpoints in 48 country currencies jesse lund head of ibm blockchain told me during a detailed podcast interview the worldwide network currently supports settlement using stellar lumens xlm did you hear that? The World Wire Network currently supports settlement using Stellar Lumens, XLM, and a US dollar stablecoin through IBM's previously announced collaboration with Stronghold. Personally, I think cryptocurrencies could very well serve as a viable settlement instrument. We've started with Lumens, which is the native asset of the Stellar Network but we already have the capacity to introduce other cryptocurrencies that could include Bitcoin or Ether. We will add more digital assets based on client demand and participants on the network, said Lund. Well, what are we talking about here? See, you guys can read the rest of this, but I just wanted to touch on this alone. And I'm gonna link all this in the description because I want all of you guys to be able to read this so that you can see that what she's saying is false and not accurate. Intro to Stellar. Stellar is an open source network for currencies and payments. Stellar makes it possible to create, send, and trade digital representations of all forms of money. Dollars, pesos, Bitcoin, pretty much anything, anything to anything. It's designed so all the world's financial systems can work together on a single network. XRP doesn't do that. Stellar has no owner. If anything, it's owned by the public. The software runs across a decentralized open network and handles millions of transactions each day, like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Stellar relies on blockchain to keep the network in sync but the end user experience is more like cash. Stellar is much faster, cheaper, and more energy efficient than typical blockchain based systems. Now he made XRP, but then he made Stellar. Don't you think he saw the flaws in XRP and made Stellar a whole lot better? I think so. And look at over here, the nodes looking like they're on space, but it has all these different currencies 
that are on the stellar network. Don't let them take you away from the big picture because I'm showing you what, what it is. And if you just don't want to see it, you're just blind. You like being seasoned. You like having cinnamon all on top of your ass. And you don't like the truth. You want your ego pet. And you want to feel the same way you've been feeling. Listening to all these hyped hopium videos telling you something going to happen tomorrow. And that shit don't never happen. What is Stella for? The Stellar Network launched in 2015. Since then, it's processed more than 450 million operations made by over 4 million individual accounts. Large enterprise companies and companies as small as single dev startups have chosen Stellar to move money and access new markets. From the beginning, Stellar has been cryptocurrency adjacent, but the software has always been intended to enhance rather than undermine or replace the existing financial system. Are you not reading what I'm saying here? If these other YouTubers are so trustworthy, how come they have not shown you this information here? They've been telling you misinformation. XRP is the, the standard. This is saying something totally different. I'm gonna reread this here, okay? <laughs> Stellar has been cryptocurrency adjacent, but the software has always been intended to enhance rather than undermine or replace the existing financial system. Whereas, say, the Bitcoin network was made for trading only Bitcoins, Stellar is a decentralized system that's great for trading any kind of money in a transparent and efficient way. The Stellar Network has a native digital currency, the Lumen, that's required in small amounts for initializing accounts and making transactions. But beyond those requirements, Stellar doesn't privilege any particular currency. It's specifically designed to make traditional forms of money, the money people have been spending and saving for centuries, more useful and accessible. So all the money that has been sitting dormant in those accounts, it's specifically designed to make traditional forms of money, the money people have been spending and saving for centuries, more useful and accessible. Seems like Stellar could help release all those other funds that are locked up for centuries, just sitting there in accounts. For example, here's what you can do with Stellar. You can create digital representation of a US dollar on Stellar. Hmm, seems like the digital dollar to me. You could, you'd call this a dollar token and you can't tell the world that whenever someone deposits a traditional dollar with you, you'll issue them one of your new tokens. When someone brings that dollar token back to you, you promise to redeem it in turn for one of the regular dollars in that deposit account. Essentially, you set up a one-to-one -one relationship between your digital token and a traditional dollar. Every one of your tokens out in the world is backed by an equivalent deposit. So while people hold the tokens, they can treat them just like traditional money because they know that they're exchangeable for traditional money in the end. This gives you the breakdown between the traditional dollar and the dollar token. Who builds on Stellar? For end users, Stellar is a fast, efficient network for trading, saving, and spending digital money. For builders, it's open financial infrastructure. Anyone can access it. There's no permission or application needed. That basket of currency tokens we just mentioned, those are on the network, ready to use. We have euros, bitcoins, dollars, Mexican pesos, Argentinian pesos, Brazilian reyes, and Nigerian nada. Their rep respective issuers handle deposit redemption and compliance so builders can focus on end user experience. They just told you all the, the basket of currencies they have on Stellar. And you guys seem to think it's going to be XRP. 
This is the basket of currencies that they've been talking about. And it's built on Stellar. So what are we talking about here? This same openness also applies the token layer. A financial institution can issue new digital tokens to fill a market need, say for the Swiss franc, without joining a proprietary association or dealing with a gatekeeper. The total power of Stellar grows with each new company and developer. And then when we talk about, and then it says, see our robust SDKs and documentation to get started with your own wallet app or token. And the SDKs, I believe was that, what was talked about with to the, at the White House, the SDK. Now, here they're telling you what's building on what's on Stellar. Everything that they've been telling you or alluding to it being for XRP, here we have the proof that this is stellar. And it's quite funny and very odd that they would blind you from this truth because they want to manipulate your emotions and keep you away from getting the true wealth that you deserve. Now, if you have a problem with me bringing this truth out, then you have a problem with your own self and you have a problem with making money. All I'm saying is don't fall for the okie doke. I'm not saying XRP is bad. I hold both, remember that. But I hold more lumens than I hold XRP. And I feel confident telling you that. Why? Because I do the own, my own research along with Sparks Flames. And it's right here presented to you. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go deeper. We can go deeper. Where is Stellar going? To put it very simple, simply, Stellar enables a future where everyday people can send money anywhere affordably and quickly. We at the Stellar Development Foundation believe we can only unlock the true power of the modern digital economy when value can flow unencumbered around the globe. That's what Stellar is for, and that's what Stellar is going to do. A legion of developers, enterprises, means companies, guys, institutions, and users share this vision. If you share too, we'd love to hear from you. Apparently, all of you XRP Maxis don't share this same vision. Because if you did, you would understand this. But you haven't been doing your own research because you've been relying on all these crypto YouTubers to do your research for you. That's why you are not as confident as I am. But ladies and gentlemen, I have to do a part two because I can go on for long and I'm going to keep digging in and crypto Eddie, I'm not done. I am not done. I'm going to come back with a second video and I want you guys to tune in for it because I'm going to show you who is building up on this stellar lumens token on this, this platform, this, uh, the stellar ecosystem, the protocol. And who's using the Lumen? She said the Lumen is not being used. Well, I'm showing you that it is being used and you're lying to the people. Ladies and gentlemen, you know who this is. This is your boy, Brando. I'll be back. Investigate truth on your own terms.